Hey guys, you remember the show Monster Quest? I saw pythons traveling north from Florida. The length of 13 feet, it's got enough venom to drop and kill an 8,000 pound elephant. Hidden in plain view. <laughs> are we talking about pythons? What the hell are we talking about? This is a, um, you better be scared, okay? If you're watching this, you better be scared. That's the vibe I'm getting. Hybrids are often problematic. Species hybrids. Off. Hybrids, I mean, the only thing I can think of is uh, this into maybe they're hybridizing with other pythons that can stand the cold. Witnesses around the world report seeing monsters. Seeing monsters. Mm. Are they real, the real or, or imaginary? Science but searches, searches for answers. On Monster, on Monster Quest. Quest. I love that intro. That intro brings me back. No joke, when I was... I don't know, middle school, download like, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes at a time. I would download that and while we went to like, you know, church group, my parents would, I would watch Monster Quest at like, I don't know, 120p. I loved the show growing up. With warm, temperate weather is popular with tourists. But Sadly. A slithering menace that strikes fear in the hearts of men. slithering menace. 20 feet long. It was absolutely huge. 20 feet long. How much do you want to bet that the story he tells, he says it's 20 feet long, but it's not verified. A 20 foot long. If he's talking about a Burmese python, this I know at the time here, there were no 20 foot long Burmese in the Everglades. I don't even think the longest one caught so far here in Florida has been 20 feet long. We've had a, a baby strangled by a 12 foot python. Oof. Eyewitnesses report seeing massive serpents measuring 15 to 20 feet in length and weighing up to 400 pounds and most closely resemble giant pythons. So are they trying to say that there are like other animals that look like snakes in the Everglades? Because it says they resemble giant pythons. I thought that's what it was. Like they were, they knew, we know they're down there. They knew at the time they were down there. They've been down there. They, the first sighting was in like 1979. But like, they know that there are big pythons down there. So what are they trying to imply is actually down there? Never have I seen anything like this and as tragic as this. In the middle of the night, a large Burmese python escaped from its enclosure. Oh. The python attacked the two-year-old girl who was sleeping in her crib. It's an emergency. Okay, what do you need? You need a police fire or an ambulance? Oh, no, the baby's dead. That's they rough. Uh, it appears that it gotten up on a toy chest and then into the crib. The boyfriend of the baby's mother uh, discovered the snake that morning, wrapped around the child in the crib. Uh, oh, that's he rough. He immediately grabbed a knife that's and sad. a cleaver. And Sadly, that kind of stuff has they happened. Have happen. Obviously. Stay on the line, please. Uh. I mean, that snake they're the using in the video is not 12 and foot. Began to hunt. Florida Wildlife is this video from the actual thing? The illegal I hate to pick this part of, because it's sad. But if this is video from the actual thing, that is not a 12 foot long snake. Like, not even close to a 12 foot long snake. ...the owned monster Burmese python. We weren't sure whether the snake was going to be alive or dead when we, when we went into the residence. I see a little mark on it, like a knife mark. Alive. Well, the, the snake was wounded, so you don't know how a that is... wounded snake was. <sighs> That's what I thought would happen in this. They're going to make everything seem a lot bigger than it actually is. This is not a 12-foot long snake. I mean, that that's a decent-sized python that might be, I don't know, 7 feet. That's not 12-foot. That's like, that's nowhere near 12-foot. Sad situation. But that's not a 12 foot snake. Would react. Oh, th no, wait, look at that thing. That's like seven feet long at most. With reports of these massive snakes. This that's all. Python was captured that is a Baca, Florida. thick this boy. Approximately Jesus Christ, look at the size of that thing. Over 300 pounds. These that thing's huge. They're coming. Bees that the population of foreign species may be expanding. If we have individuals that 
have a genetic predisposition to living in a temperate area, they could persist possibly in some areas way outside of Florida. I bet they're going to use global warming in this. They're going to say global warming is going to cause areas that these animals normally wouldn't be able to live in. And it's going to expand their available range. I guarantee that's what they're going to do. Oh. Monster Quest will launch a search to confirm reports that invasive pythons are taking over places like Florida. Florida. You can tell this guy's a Yankee. The search Florida. Will start near the Everglades. Grounds. I mean, if you're going to start somewhere, well, Everglades National Park South is South the way to go. Uh, hey, Chandler. Pearson will be aided by local guys. They were right in your Florida. backyard. You know, I've passed the Everglades outpost multiple times. Every single time I go down there, it, I never am there when it's open. I'm always there either at night or the first time I was down there was during COVID and it just wasn't open. I go to the Everglades outpost. Chandler, I want to see your stuff. Show me your stuff. We'll explore New York's Central Park. New York! Snakes have been reported. New York City! New York City! We're going to be down here in the Everglades and uh, you're going up to New York City. What? Why New York? Are Why? What makes you think that that jump is going to be, what, are you going to look in the sewers? He will see if environmental conditions could support a breeding population of these deadly predators. In New York City, breeding oh, wow. populations of these York, pythons. At this something. time, at this time, they hadn't even found the first nest. It's only been the past couple of years that they, like, there's been documentation of finding the nests. We got the micron infrared system. We can use that. The micron like infrared. That. Have oh, this must have been before FLIR. The urban environment down here. So when we send it up, it'll already be calibrated. <laughs> they switch it to Python so mode. All you have to do is a lipstick cam. We've got a lipstick of cam. On it, but, is that? Uh, is that a piece of PVC <laughs> with a little tiny camera taped onto it? You know, you can go in uh, some underneath stairwell. <laughs> Literally, is a piece of PVC pipe with a camera taped to it. And abundant hiding places. It's an ideal breeding ground for these monster snakes. What? So they're looking for these pythons, not out in the Everglades. They're not looking for them out in environment. They're looking at for them in abandoned buildings, in the wild, in where they're from. They only breed in abandoned buildings. Like right up in here. Oh, damn, look at those spiders. <laughs> abandoned. <laughs> He's just Hidden areas. Oh, yeah, we're gonna find a python in this fucking yeah, pipe. That's. There we go. What do you think about this one right there? That big around. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> There, <laughs> it's PVC pipe, a flashlight, their little camera, all duct taped together. A natural disaster in 1992 was likely the cause of the explosion of the python population in Florida. Yeah, the hurricane yeah. Andrew did a tremendous This is absolutely true. Facilities and homes in urban areas in South Florida when it struck. Its eye went right over the center of the warehouse area where most of the tropical pets coming into the yeah it was some sort of facility i don't remember exactly what type i think he's right it was a breeding facility destroyed it and over a hundred burmese pythons escaped there were some around before that but that is really what made the population really boom invasive species Rhoda believes that pythons could now currently invade areas as far north as washington now with global climate change, it will extend further north. Uh, the climate match will go further north. By the turn of the, this century, um, places like New York City would be within the climate match. Hey, New York City. Give it another hundred years. You'll have berms and then you'll be in trouble. In existence right now that pythons can go as far north as, as, as here in New York and west over to San Francisco. And we're just here today just to kind of check it out to see the feasibility of that theory. 
There's uh, not many wild places left in New York City, but Central Park is, is uh, about 800 acres of, uh, of greenery. <laughs> he looks around the rock. There's just a guy shooting up heroin on the other side of the rock. <laughs> hey, you guys seen any big pythons? Yeah, I got a python for you. <laughs> and if there were a snake anywhere in New York City, this is a good place for it to be. And, He's and looking at... Shelter, so like is there a python in here? Hello? Pythons can survive in temperatures as low as 40 degrees. That, that in and of itself takes New York out of the question. It can survive as low as 40 degrees. Florida, Tampa, we get temperatures in the 30s every year. It doesn't usually get below that, but it does. New York, you're telling me New York doesn't experience temperatures below 40 degrees. I found some of these really neat hollow logs and I'm gonna check a few of them. If there's any snake around, he could be inside. <laughs> He's got one too! Oh wait, no, this one's even, his lipstick cam is even better. It's just a stick with the camera taped on it. It's not even BBC, it's just a stick. That looks like a good the time right there. Is investigating Road cruising. On the oh, they're going back to the building. Where they suspect giant pythons may be breeding. Is there any indication that they were breeding there? Or is it just because you don't want to go actually driving around areas that might actually have pythons? You, Is there any indication at all that they were breeding there? The team emerges from the old factory and adjusts their equipment for a search of the nearby area. Shocking that they didn't find anything. They're fine. Comes quickly. Oh. You want to turn this record deck off, Troy? I got one over here. Got one over here. Do you just have like a grasshopper just chilling on his head? See it over to the right of you, Dale? Oh, yep. Yeah. Ready? Get him! Got him. Nice. Look at that, they actually All caught right. one. Baby Burmese Python. Fresh hatch. They are breeding here in this location. We got one. For real, Great. for real. They're breeding inside the building. We've had it outside of the building, but they are definitely breeding inside of the building. That's now intermingled in eh. This causes some to kind of monster hybrid. A snake with crushing strength of a constrictor. And the deadly venom. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are they saying that cobras and pythons can hybridize? As if they're saying that. I don't know. That That is the most dumb thing I've ever heard. This is the History Channel. There's ancient aliens and stuff on this. Friends are going to get together and they're going to reproduce and provide some kind of monster snake. Wasilewski says that hybrids could happen only within the same family of snakes. When two snakes that are very closely related, when their ranges overlap, sometimes there's some hybridization that takes place in the wild. So why wouldn't they lead off with that? Why would they even make you think there's a possibility that pythons and cobras could interbreed? Why would they even give you that thought in your mind? That makes no sense whatsoever. You're just feeding bullshit. That's all that is. The expedition team has found a baby python near the Florida Everglades. Got him. How old is this one right here? Uh, just a couple months. Just a couple of months. Um, Look at that, man. You did it, man. You brought us right to him. And if this one right here is an indication of anything, it's an indication that they are That's a very chill baby sure. berm. I guarantee you somebody didn't just come lose their baby python. I mean, out. I'm not accusing them of doing anything, but like any time I've ever been around a baby wild berm, they're musking all over the place, they're biting you. Did that one just let him grab it behind the head and pick him up and it's just chill and calm? I mean, not saying it's not possible. It obviously is possible, but it's a very calm baby berm. Suspicious. 
back to New York. It was a peaceful fall day in Central Park with children playing. But something terrible was lurking. Something terrible? It's just a snake. It's an escaped pet. Individual that uh, there was a snake and a rock. Uh, my division the escape pet is something terrible, something lurking, something that's going to eat your children. That didn't work too well either, so eventually we had to uh, gently chisel uh, the rock away from its body, and then we were able to pull it out of the rock uh, crevice. You and chiseled time, the rock away? The snake was nine feet long, and it had a red tail, and it uh, was brown in color. The park's rangers eventually captured the snake and put it on display in the zoo. It's a good size boa. Right by its owner, and the snake got but that's not nine feet long. What is with the these numbers? Is that is not a nine foot boa. boa. He said to hurry, so that means it's not a baby. Someone take my backpack. Take the Ooh. Boat, and let's drag him into the road. Oh, what sure happened to its head? That's a good size berm. Someone tried to cut this thing's head off or something. And so you try to crush its head too? Oh, why don't you grab it on the back of the head like that baby? It's missing a chunk of its tail. That's good. You got him. That poor snake. Okay, not going to thing's beat the hell up. I can't believe these things are freaking living wild in Florida. Freaking. It's real. There's real. It's real, guys. Pythons living in Florida. No one said it wasn't real. It's full of crap. You're full of crap, guys. You're full of crap. This, that's, that's no one said they weren't there. This head's come around. Okay. <laughs> hey, as long as there's not a spider in there, he's okay. He's got it. The injured Burmese python was taken to a veterinarian who confirmed that the beast had been injured by a human. No shit. This looks to me like a chop chopped with a machete and they got away bony skull so it could very easily have been hit by a, a so let's stretch this thing they're gonna end up killing that snake they're euthanizing it the python was difficult for Pearson to handle and it would have easily overpowered a child oh my god Venomous that's a good sized snake a snake that would would ever hybridize with a, a python it, because there's hell, none saw one another the bigger one might want to try to eat the other one but they certainly would never want to breed because they and, can't and in terms of uh, uh physical abilities they're, they're, the organs the reproductive organs are completely different it wouldn't that it was like a key in a lock they would they would never uh, a venomous species of snake could never uh, reproduce with the python that was your reasoning on why they couldn't because it's like a key and a lock and the organs wouldn't meet up? What? That's not, what? No! Some snake expert, some biologist, that's not how that works at all. It's not like freaking dogs where they're, they're the same species, just different breeds. Different species have a hard time interbreeding. Let alone across different families, different genuses. Florida monsters are real, and in, in this case, it's a it's a twenty foot Burmese python. But they're not monsters. It's just a fucking snake. Close to urban areas. <sighs> the team has made some interesting discoveries. There are deadly Burmese pythons breeding near deadly. Florida's Everglades, close to the population center of Miami. And even more terrifying, there may be wild king cobras living here. These beasts are increasingly coming into contact with adults and children. We have a couple of instances where there might have been a king cobra that escaped, but we're going to say that there could be king cobras living here now too, and they're going to interbreed with them. The team has also discovered that the underground environments of major metropolitan cities might be warm enough to allow these creatures to exist much further north than previously believed. That's it. The exotic snakes, snakes in the, in the sewers. Is, uh, it's going to increase the numbers. So it's not going to go away. It's a novel predator. And it's 
potentially a serious problem. I just want to take some pictures of you. You want a brewski? Uh, from a human safety standpoint, the python population or the problem we have in the Everglades has not peaked as yet. And, and nope, I believe that's true. the numbers are going to get larger as well as their sizes are going to get larger over time. So if you're in the South Florida area, or if you're in an area where you hear that there might be these invasive species out, you need to take it seriously. Take it seriously. Take it seriously. Ah, it won't happen to me. Ah, it's no big deal. I'm here to You're going to get life. strangled. These animals are real. They're really out here, and they really can kill you. I love that stuff. I know it's ridiculous, but that is stuff that I very much enjoy. I used to, this is nostalgic for me. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to do more videos like this. Let me know if there's another show you'd like me to look over. I will. I I'm trying something different. I'm trying something new. Go check out my TikTok for daily uploads. Y'all have a good rest of your day.